Welcome to Embenica's Industry Panel Discussion on Telecom and Media Innovation, with a particular focus on 5G, edge computing, and the Internet of Things. This webinar is being brought to you as part of Embenica's Discover the Possible, a 2019 program of events and publications exploring emerging technologies. I will give more details at the end of the discussion today on how to find out more and with some further reading points and also the publication of an upcoming white paper that accompanies today's talk. This webinar is being recorded and there will be time for audience questions, but more on this later. Firstly, some introductions. I am Mike Wilson, a CEO and founder of Ditto, and I have the pleasure of moderating today's session. So some notes on Ditto. We founded a firm in 2008, and we are a marketing and business development practice focused on technology but offices in London and in Dublin. I'm also the founder of the RegTech Forum, a not-for-profit industry-wide community and resource dedicated to regulation and technology innovation. I have to say how pleased and delighted I am to be here today and joined by two leading industry voices sharing their perspectives on this arena. And you know, we all have mobile phones, we all have access to this technology, but never do we see a day come that would have this form of transformational change. So let me get on with some introductions here. Mustafa Banessa, I hope I get all the pronunciations right in these names, guys, is the CTO at Invenica, is a digital strategist, innovator, and inventor, and an emerging technologies enthusiast with over 12 years' experience in the information technology sector. He has helped multiple organizations across the UK, Germany, France, and Belgium to transform their business with innovation, thought leadership, and emerging technology. He's worked in different roles across the IT industry and contributing creating new capabilities, programs, and initiatives. With extensive experience across different industries as financial services, manufacturing, media, and telecom, very relevant today, and many others. Mustafa combines his in-depth knowledge of technology and understanding of industry challenges to create different values and new markets for his clients. Mustafa has several confirmed and pending inventions to his name, leveraging technologies like blockchain, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and IoT, He's involved in the research and development of cutting and bleeding edge technologies like edge computing and quantum computing. Welcome, Mustafa. Thank you, Mike. And now to Flavio. So, uh, Flavio is Professor Flavio de Olivia Silva. He's a PhD from the Polytechnic University of Sao Paulo and a master's degree in computer science from the Federal University of Uberlandia. Graduated in computer science himself from the Federal University of Uberlandia and also holds a degree in electronic engineering. He is an associate professor of the Faculty of Computer Science and of the Federal University of Uberlandia. Flavio has 25 years of experience in the software development industry, especially in highly available and distributed web systems. He's a member of multiple international committees, working groups, and associations. His current research interests are related to future networks, software-defined networks, network function visualization, autonomous and intelligent systems, cloud computing, ubiquitous and mobile computing, and software-based innovation. Since 2017, he's the local coordinator of the Brazil UFU supporting group, uh, working across uh, supporting the 5G ecosystem of startups, enterprise, STOs, operators, academia, and research institutes. And since 2018, he's been the coordinator of Brazil 5G, an industry-wide program to foster the creation and maturing of a Brazilian 5G ecosystem. Good afternoon, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be moderating today, and thank you for taking part in today's discussion and sharing your insights. So to begin, let me just outline how the webinar will work. It's a webinar in two parts. We'll start with Partey and Mustafa, who is going to open up with a presentation with an industry overview and explainer of 5G, Edge, and IoT. Then we'll move to Part B, Flavio, uh, who will talk about technology and a business perspective, a slightly deeper dive. To start off, I will give a short overview of the topic. I'll then hand over to Mustafa, who will give his first presentation. At the end of this presentation, I will take some questions. If the audience does have questions, please send them through to Haley, and she will uh, collate. We will then hear um, Flavio's uh, presentation. At the end of both, uh, we will have a summary and a chat through. I'll then ask each presenter to sum up with one closing comment. OK, so to set the scene. In our talk today, we will be discussing a trinity of technologies, 5G, edge computing, and IoT, the Internet of Things. 
how they are transforming the telecom industries, and how we will connect and interact with the internet, and how future service will be delivered to us, and also ultimately how our behavior will be monitored and analyzed. So what are these trio and what do they mean for business and technology? Well, 5G is not very much just front of mind of CIOs, but the recent coverage of Huawei and security concerns is very much front of newspapers. It's a technology, certainly not without controversy. So what is 5G? Well, five, fifth generation wireless is the latest iteration of cellular technology. It's engineered to greatly increase the speed and responsiveness of wireless networks. For example, a self-driving car would require a network size that offers extremely fast, low latency connections so a vehicle could navigate in, in real time. And so the second part of this trident, edge computing. Well, the definition for edge computing is when you generate collate and analyze data on the edge of the network where the data is generated rather than centralized servers and systems, commonly called the cloud. This enables the support of a vast amount of real-time data. And now finally to IoT, the Internet of Things. The interconnection via the Internet of Computing Devices embedded in everyday objects, enabling them to send and receive data across these networks. So to get underway, I would like to invite Mustafa to kick us off with his presentation, an industry overview and explainer of 5G, Edge, and IoT. Mustafa. Thank you, Mike. I'm always delighted to be part uh, of, of these conversations and talk about emerging technologies and tell inspiring stories of our clients creating differentiation and pushing the borders with innovation. Indeed, 5G, edge computing, and consumer IoT are transforming the media and telecom industry. If you don't mind, uh, I'd like to set the scene for the industry first. Uh, media and telecom is a highly competitive industry where key players have to maintain a high level of collaboration, otherwise the telecom path wouldn't quite work. And of course, that can't happen without standardization and normalization. Um, this, of course, creates stagnation uh, of offering uh, of products and services by businesses within the industry. Telecom providers today need to identify new growth areas and figure out how to expand into new markets. The upgrade of 5G as a new uh, network infrastructure and new standards uh, is the enabler uh, to create new opportunities for telecom providers. And of course, to create new applications on edge and bring data, value, and experiences closer to the customer and to smart IoT devices. Telecom providers, of course, are aware of uh, the opportunity that 5G and edge computing uh, is creating. Uh, and we are helping them discover the art of the possible with these technologies. Um, what I wanted to, to start with is, is kind of flesh out the uh, challenges uh, that we've discovered with, with our clients. And the first challenge for edge computing is finding its place in a market dominated by cloud computing, which is quite an established and mature technology today and is core to uh, components of technology legacy to any business. Uh, accessing this market, of course, will require proving the added value of edge computing first. Many put edge computing and cloud versus each other uh, and see edge as a threat to cloud. The reality is edge computing is an extension to cloud, bringing decentralized processing and more speed, less latency uh, as an added value to the table. We tend to approach value proposition with our partners in, in media and telecom from a use case point of view. Edge computing is not applicable, uh, of course, to all the use cases out there. Some applications uh, that already exist today on cloud are still suitable for the cloud. However, there are numerous use cases like uh, distributed data, decentralized processing, and global value reach that are fit for, for edge. And these use cases are the right ones to show uh, the true value of the technology. The other thing that both technologists like us and our partners in media and telecom and other industries are aware of is that edge computing is its leading edge technology. There is still a lot to do in order to achieve maturity and enable scalability, but we all agree that adoption by businesses is what drives trends and not the other way around. The next step in our journey to discover the art of the possible around edge computing and consumer IoT uh, is to define where to start. Uh, and we fleshed out with our partners three areas uh, where we could identify the true value of edge computing. 
The first one was optimization of services and products of partners of media and telecom in general, more specifically internet solution providers. Improving speed of streaming and downloading and reducing latency for TV and video providers, music, voice and virtual conferencing, and of course, online gaming, which is an industry that is growing rapidly. The other use cases reside within the media and telecom industry itself. Uh, the alignment with data privacy regulation, for example, is one of them. Uh, data protection, uh, data crossing borders, uh, localization and regulation. Uh, the last area to explore, of course, was uh, data processing on edge, which is more beneficial to other industries with use cases like smart cars and consumer IoT overall or, or, or smart, smart homes, which is gaining more traction in the automotive industry. Uh, our conclusion with the discovery sprint that we've done with our clients uh, uh, after investigating the possibilities of this technology is that edge is too important for telecom providers to ignore. It can enable the creation of a framework for innovation for other businesses and industries. Edge is also uh, or has the potential to create new markets and opportunities for media and telecom itself and their partners. Improved latency does enhance customer experience and meet increasing demands of seamless digital interaction interactions using um, offerings from uh, internet solution providers. Online gaming, for instance, can provide better immersive experiences and extend into alternative realities like AR and VR easily. With these findings, um, and uh, the fact that 5G is being deployed and growing uh, uh, at scale globally, provisioning the right infrastructure and framework for uh, internet solution providers uh, and partners in other industries will enable the enhancement of existing service, services and products uh, to create uh, further revenue um, generators for the media and telecom industry. Uh, Co-creating with third-party businesses to explore and scale products and solutions like smart cars or edge security uh, or smart cities is certainly going to create differentiation for, differentiation for um, our partners in, in media and telco. Uh, and that is the way to create the new and trigger growth for the business. Well, thank you very much. I, I think I, I've got some questions coming in. I have some questions myself I'd, li I'd like to open up for a few minutes. And first of all, it all sounds very fanciful, doesn't it? You know, why do telcos who traditionally kind of sell minutes, why do they think they're best place to deliver edge and IoT products and services when we all know from software delivery and delivering these type of services are difficult and complicated and very different from the traditional role that a telco will find? And I open that question first to, to you, Mustafa, and, and then to, to Flavio. So what makes things telcos that can do this? It, they don't traditionally have ever done this. This type of edge and IoT services sounds very complicated. Well, I think the short answer is no, they shouldn't think that. I think when we're talking about decentralizing value, we're talking about collaboration between businesses and with the end consumer. I think the value of telcos within this food chain is in regards to providing services around wireless communication, for example, protocols, converse technologies, scaling. And of course, it comes with a whole load bunch of back-end services like billing reconciliation, and we're also talking about the actual 5G infrastructure. So I think for, for, for media and telecoms, it's actually creating the framework for other businesses to create new values. And that, of course, would sit on top of existing values that, that media and telecom provide to their customers. Hmm. And thank you very much, Mustafa. The same question to you, Flavio, um, I was getting some questions in before we start your presentation, but. Why do you think telcos can do this? Traditionally, telcos have actually quite a strained relationship with their service providers. They traditionally don't provide this type of service and this type of, of, of product to market. What do you see as an enabler of 5G across Brazil that telcos can actually make this inflection point change in their business model? Uh, well, Mike, uh, to, from, from the point of view, if you look, you know, the telecom operators, Historically, they are selling uh, just connections to the users. So they came from the landlines and then they are providing uh, data connections and then, uh, you know, uh, minute plans for, for or, or data plans for, for users, for, I mean, personal users. 
So uh, the, the telecom operator, they, 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 they are specialized on the infrastructure side of the telecommunication. And, and, and if we look history, if we look as, so, as long as internet comes, uh, and so the, 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 uh, the solution providers start using and doing business on top of that. So I, I think that uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting moment for the operators because I mean, 5G, the real value of 5G comes uh, when you when you when you offer so solutions to the customers and and the telecom operators they can do that they can be in this uh, uh, in this role they can be on, on this on this on, the, on this business as well so not only providing the connection but they can provide the solutions they can provide uh, the, the the infrastructure uh, not only by themselves but putting together I think different actors or different providers. And, and shaping solutions tailored to their customers. They already have customers. Uh, they uh, they might go, you know, to the market and see how they can get these customers in, with new offerings. So a very interesting so, model to everybody. It, yeah, and so, so like, just a try one typical user case here, maybe just to to to, um, to follow on from Mustafa's last point of smart cities, smart users, smart devices, smart cars. So, so, you know, the 5G itself network won't be the differentiator, it will be the service on the 5G. So you could see maybe AIG as an insurance company, or a insurance company, coupling up with a 5G provider that will provide a, the tracking on their devices for speed and limits and control on their cars and the internet of things. But, you know, is that how they're going to differentiate? So 5G itself isn't a differentiator. It's going to be this product or service. And, and how how will that then? It's going to be price, surely. If, if everyone's got the same tech and everyone's got the same service, there's a chase at the bottom of price. I'm just kind of very interested to frame from an industry perspective, okay, telcos are going to do all of this stuff. But when do you all do it? Where's the juice? How are they going to make their money? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I see 5G as, as the enabler to create differentiation, not necessarily the technology that will create differentiator outside of, of media and telecom. And just to, to, to frame this within a use case, uh, if we think about the number of, of device manufacturers today uh, producing uh, IoT devices, uh, just wrapping all of this in one ecosystem to enable, for example, uh, uh, your, your, your insurer to cover you with home insurance based on data that your home is, is, is uh, sending across to the cloud or to the edge is, 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 is a big use case because that will massively uh, improve premiums if, if, if you have insight uh, into, into what's happening in your house. And there are other several use cases in the automotive industry, for example, or, or in, in other industries as well. And there is, of course, the whole identity management piece mm -hmm. of work where uh, all of this data that is generated by uh, devices owned by the users and you can you know, connect the dots to know who the device uh, belongs to and who the data belongs to. And I think that's another use case that uh, everybody is quite hyped up with, how to guarantee privacy, how to provide uh, the GDPR umbrella for, for uh, customers that, that are that live in, in the European Union. So um, just to, to uh, summarize, I don't actually see it as the, the differentiation uh, uh, factor. I see it as the enabler. I think pairing 5G uh, and, and deploying new capabilities using other emerging technologies like blockchain, for example, to, um, to um, guarantee data integrity on edge or uh, um, localization of uh, artificial intelligence processing on edge is going to improve a lot of experiences with existing products, but also create new products as well. Fantastic. Well, I've made some notes here because I do think Flavio Mustafa, I'd like to return to this, the idea of privacy and data and, and the sovereignty of data. Something you were very well versed talking about the sovereignty of identity, but I think it'd be charged was not to talk about security data in the highway and, and what these means. I think for this kind of infrastructure, uh, if people aren't so familiar with five G, I think they're very familiar with kind of leaking cabinet reports and what have you. So I think that'd be great just to touch on that. So I think that's teed us up. Thank you very much, Mustafa, to, to the second part of our presentation which is a really deeper dive uh, with Flavio into a business and technology perspective on this. So it's my pleasure to, to pass the baton uh, over to Flavio and part B of our chat today. Flavio. Hi, Mike. Thanks for the introduction. Thanks you all for being here with us today. Um, well, as Mike said, I, I, I am a professor in the Federal University of Uberlândia. I'm working since 2010 
or I mean, since its beginning with this trend of networking uh, softwareization and software defined networking, networking function virtualization. And I've been along uh, before that in the market in telecom operators, working on with telecom operators and also with internet solution providers. So I can have this a big picture of how things are going on. And I would like to share to you today some ideas. Uh, well, I've been involved, uh, heavily involved in this 5G trends, not only in Brazil, but also in Europe. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are part of a, of a Horizon 2020 project called 5G in Fire, where we are building an infrastructure across Europe and also connected to Brazil uh, to, 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 to test and to experiment new 5G arc software-based architectures, services, and so it, everything is connected. Uh, well, regarding the technical scenario, I would like to make some questions to you. Well, uh, to, to me, uh, as, as you guys know, right now, uh, telecom operators are starting the, the, the 5G development and deployment. This deployment is starting uh, with uh, the enhanced mobile broadband offering. So the idea here is to provide fixed wireless access to the customers. So when, when you look to 5G, the 5G has kind of three different services uh, that are, are, are being designed. Uh, the idea is the uh, enhanced mobile broadband, where you're talking to increase your, your data rates. So this is basically what we have from 4G and 3G to 4G and also to 5G. We're increasing data rates. Um, but uh, so, so what we have here, it's a kind of more of the same, I mean, uh, this deployment. So uh, we, we, are, we are offering uh, to the users so the, uh, uh, data rates, basically is what fixed wireless, wireless access is. So it's a kind of more of the same that we have today. But to me, uh, the real value of 5G comes uh, with uh, ultra reliable communication and also massive machine type communications. Because these two uh, capabilities will enable this new generation of services. Because we, if we're talking here about 5G, uh, of, of only talking about enhanced mobile broadband, so everything would be the same. Uh, or, I mean, uh, 5G will be just a data rate increase from, five, four, from 4G. That what would be done. But now, 5G network is, is, is being designed uh, to be a, a, a softwareized network. Which we have, where we have the, the concept of a slice uh, with different uh, functions. I mean, uh, virtual functions running inside this, this slice. So I can have one slice focusing one type of application and on, uh, on, the same, on top of the same infrastructure managed by the operator, the operator, a different slice with a different set of functions on the path, I mean, on the communication path to provide different capabilities. So oh, it's, it's from here that we have the, the real value of 5G, uh, using uh, or exploring the ultra reliable and low latency communication and also the machine type communication. Uh, so new business case. But when we, we come to this, edge computing is a key and mandatory component uh, for these new business cases that require ultra reliable and low latency communication and massive machine type communication. Uh, the point here is that uh, the, when you come to uh, low latency, for instance, uh, what you need to have is part of the application or part of the, uh, of the solution that is providing the service to the, to the user. It should be running here or close to this user. Uh, so uh, to the latency uh, um, required to some time of applications, so there is some, uh, Mustafa's talked about different use cases, right? That, that we can explore. So when you're talking like about autonomous car or we're talking about uh, a remote surgery or something like that. So you need reliability, you need low latency on, on, on the network from, from to the application. So, the, so this edge computing, uh, I mean, part of the architecture it's a, a key and mandatory component. Uh, so you cannot explore this, this new opportunities without having uh, uh, the edge computer near to the user, uh, closer to the, the applications. So, um, so, so from the technical area, what we have today 
it's a very strong opportunity or a very strong change on how the network itself is is it's configured and it's running or are the how it's built and deployed to the user to custom services well so when we talk uh, please next slide please uh, so when we talk about the business scenario uh, what we have uh, is that in fact telecom operators are around the world they're, they're looking for new business models uh, and, and but this business model mm -hmm. might not only focus the personal use, like the business to consumer, but also the professional use, uh, where the, where the regarding the, the business to business. Uh, so uh, what what in fact this is a it's a kind of of problem that we we see everywhere. U.S., Europe, Brazil. The operators they're looking for okay. So this everything is here, but how we will take advantage of that? Uh, for instance, I, 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 I read some reviews about uh, an analysts, investment analysts, talking about costs and, and revenues and return of investment from 4G to 5G. And some analysis, they only consider the personal use, the business to consumer side. So when you're talking about that, this is not the correct analysis because you're talking about uh, offering a, a bigger data rate to the users, I mean to personal users. And, and, and so 5G is not about that. So uh, around the world, the telecom industry is looking for uh, ways of take advantage of this uh, to, to change or to do that inflection that we talked previously of changing how they operate and how, what they offer to the users. The point here is that in fact, these the 5G uh, idea or the 5G design or the 5G vision, let's say in this way, uh, it, the, the concepts are too new uh, for the traditional actors in the telecom area. So I mean, analysts, vendors, the operators, to everybody, everybody that is connected, uh, the government as well, the, 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 the concepts, they are, they are new uh, uh, to the, the telecom area. So, so to, they need to I mean, it's a kind of reshaping how the way of thinking. So to take advantage of 5G, so telecom operators, they need to explore new ways to, to create, to develop, to deploy, and to manage. So a new generation of solutions uh, that uh, uh, is based on new services and applications. So it's a, it's a very changing uh, scenario for, from the business point for the operators. Because uh, uh, today, operators are selling like unlimited data plans. So with 5G, what will they sell? Will they sell like latency plans, if we talk about ultra reliable and low latency communication? Uh, or will they say, they say per device connection plans, if we talk about uh, massive machine type communication? So this plan allow you 1,000 connections, 2,000 connections, 5,000, 10,000. So, uh, this way of thinking is the, like the traditional one, the traditional thinking of the operator. But the point is, uh, this uh, uh, to take advantage a new uh, uh, a new way of looking to all this ecosystem is necessary. Next slide, please. So, um, well, if, if we talk about the technical approach, what we need here, uh, it's the I mean, the telecom operators, uh, they need to like to use the, the I say that the internet solution provide way of thinking, let's say in this way. What I'm talking about, I'm talking about open source code, about integration, about build and not buying solutions. Because traditionally, uh, uh, and, and I, I've, been, I, I've been on this in the past, so I can say, uh, uh, if you go in a, in an in a internet solution provider and they say, oh, let's create a cloud and let's say how it works and let's sell uh, services on top of this cloud. Uh, this, the internet solution provider way is, okay, and so let's buy some bare metal, let's download some codes and let's try to, to manage or to create a system to manage this and then let's put it on the, put it on the market. If you go to the telecom operator way of doing this, uh, they probably will do an RFI and then our, uh, our request for proposal. And so they look for vendors and they will buy a solution, deploy it, and then manage and run it. 
So it's 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 important to 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 change in this way. And this is more related with open source code integration. Uh, so telecom, some telecom operators right now are on uh, are are joined uh, Linux Foundation projects to create platforms, to create solutions, and so so there's a very rich ecosystem. There are very rich movements in the industry itself, where where the solution providers are are also taking part of the development of the solutions. So this will like open source solutions that will be available or deployed in different scenarios. Um, and right, and, and by the way, as long as uh, the 5G technology is not mature enough, uh, it's been under the the, the specification and, and 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 the design of products and their development. So in fact, this is the right moment for the operators to focus on the development of ultra reliable and low latency. Uh, uh, communications and also massive machine type communication solutions. So it, now it's the time to think about what we can do, what we can offer. And from the technical point of view, I think that the, the, as long as we have all these opportunities, uh, to me it's important that the operators, they should look for, uh, uh, let's say, a reference architecture. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, an architecture of applications, of the network itself, because this network will be a softwareized network, so the different functions along on this network, and also the infrastructure that they need to support uh, these new solutions. So, the, so the point is uh, starting this right now, because as long as the, the the you know the time comes, and then the opportunities will be easier to reach the market and to and to deploy and and to offer the solutions. In fact, what the, the, the I mean, the technical uh, area, the technology, uh, the solutions, uh, it will enable the operators to differentiate themselves. Because if you look to the telecom operators, no matter if you're in Brazil, if you're in, in, in the United Kingdom, if you're in Germany, if you look to them, uh, they will offer basically the same services. And it's a matter of, I know, you know the the operator that 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 uh, helps you better uh, when you call him. Uh, maybe it's the one you choose because the services they're most the same and the prices are also similar. So the technical point of view, it's time to move in this direction to look for this differentiation. And if we go uh, um, to the business, so this will be the technical approach. I mean, uh, so to look for these open source solutions. Uh, uh, look for what what is, is in the market at this moment. Yeah, I mean, from the technical point, and start uh, uh, playing with that. Starting uh, working on the solutions. But um, an important point here is that uh, it's not a, an an isolated action of the solution provider. I mean, of the telecom operator. I mean, uh, to build this, uh, it's a kind of putting together uh, different. So that's the integration word here, which is important. The point is not to create everything by itself, uh, or by himself, but or, or 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 to have the control of everything. But but create solutions, maybe in getting information or getting uh, part of the solution, so we can have devices from one provider. We can have different uh, platforms or software and, and integrate this. Put all this together on site with the now with its its network its functions and then build a whole solution to the user so that's the i mean the technical approach that should be explored but this is really new to everybody right and if you go to the business approach so next slide please uh, uh the point here is how to do that to me uh, the 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 telecom operators they, they should choose some verticals so uh, mustafa talked about different services different areas or different verticals that 5g is exploring so th this is a very interesting point as well because when you when you go to 5G, uh, uh, your 5G is focusing services on different verticals. So we're talking about agriculture, we're talking about cities, uh, we're talking about mobility, transportation, health, uh, we're talking about energy, media, and entertainment. So it's important to the telecom user uh, choose verticals. And to me, uh, a good a good approach for that is uh, look to your customer base, user base that you have today. 
looking to the companies or to, to the business uh, uh, you, 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 are, you, are, you have today on your base. And then, as long as you have this, you can like to pick these users, I mean, big users, relevant users, and try uh, to bake on or to build solutions to this category of users that you have. Because uh, it's important here to know uh, the user, I mean, uh, what are the pains, uh, to, to use a very you know, common word, uh, what are the pains that these companies are, have now in how the technology can help them? For, for example, uh, in, in Europe and also in Brazil, uh, we're, we're, I, I'm involved here, for instance, on a, on a, a large-scale pilot where the telecom operator uh, is trying to do this uh, idea or to put together different solutions and, 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 to, and to deploy into in the agricultural area. Uh, so uh, what we have, if we look for the technology, uh, I mean, for example, agriculture, um, today, if you compare to 50 years ago, uh, I mean, the technology, it provided, uh, you know, like in the US, you have 600, uh, 650% of, uh, 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 of productivity of more corn with 13% less area. Uh, uh, so this is what technology brings to the users. And what, we're, what the, 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 the operator has here, the opportunity is to, is to help uh, to build or to, to the solutions in an integrated fashion and offer to their customers. So it's a kind of differentiation. So one, one operator will maybe focus on different areas or, or, or even if it's in the same area, or, or I mean, then the customer can try to, to figure out what are the bad solutions. So it's important to understand the customer base that you have. So, and, and, and after that, create these custom solutions, right? Using different verticals, uh, so the solutions uh, or these different components are, are, are offered to the users. The problem is that these offerings of these new solutions, they, they, they need new approaches. I mean, uh, what we're talking here is in a different way of doing the management of the network, uh, of, of billing, you know, how revenue sharing, because we're talking here about different solutions, maybe from different providers. So that, so you create a, a big whole solution to the customer and, and, and then you have to manage this. Uh, so it's, a, it's challenging uh, to, to the operator from the business perspective as well. But to me, this is the, the correct way because right now uh, the technology is being developed. Uh, the, the, the standardization process are undergoing. So this is the moment to understand and to create and trying to build up the solutions that will then take advantage of the network. Uh, and then you can deploy the network focusing on this real business cases. So, so, so this is, will also uh, make easier for you to, 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 to measure uh, you know, the, the investment or, or the, that should be done on the 5G network. So next slide, please. So I would like to conclude my, my, my statements. Um, so uh, to me, uh, three points here for us to close this, this, this conversation. Uh, I mean, what I have to say. Um, uh, using also a very known phrase, there's a notion of opportunities. I mean, and, and we talk about oceans, uh, right? Ocean is not a, a, an easy place to be, right? but it's big and so uh, you can have a lot of opportunities also but you have a lot of challenges uh, to, to surf on this, on this ocean. So it's important to explore uh, technical uh, challenges and also the business challenges but face them in an integrated way. Uh, so there is a lot of opportunities for the operators and they can use this so this is the right moment to look for it. So, okay. Fixed wireless access is nice. Enhanced mobile broadband will bring a value to, the, to, to some customers for sure. Uh, it will be easier for you in some locations to deploy your, your, your uh, services and to, and to sell to new customer base, for instance. But the whole value of the 5G is on the new use cases that are based on ultra reliable communication and massive machine type communication because these are 
the capabilities of the network that will enable this new wave of, of solutions that will for, for, for sure impact our society as for as for the impacted if you go to you know uh, if you go to 2009 uh, you know we're talking about Samsung Galaxy was not already Galaxy was not already in the market it was uh, it was the, the first release comes on 2010 and so uh, if we look to 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 nine years ago ten years ago we have a very different market on that time and what we have today so we have a lot of different new solutions or new uh, uh, applications that are changing the way people communicate the people consume video that the people listen music changing the way things are, are the people you know use transportation and 5g has this power to, to you know to to, to, to make this change but it, it's important uh, to to explore this and so in this area uh, as I told before the edge is a mandatory component on the 5g axis so to, to give life of this the network will also be different because the operator you need to have uh, close to the users uh, computing power uh, close to the users devices sensors uh, that maybe will not be managed by, by the operator but by all the 30 parties and everything must be put together so uh, in, 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 in a final way we can say that uh, the point here is to rethink uh, the way uh, solutions are created they are developed they are deployed and also managed so it's a big change to the operators but to me is where the real uh, uh, 5g uh, value will come and also this will enable be a neighbor different innovations or of new solutions that will come to the market um, so I think we have a very a very interesting path and this path also is, is being it can be you know you can talk about this in a global way so uh, we're talking here I'm from Brazil uh, you guys from UK we're talking here and we have different projects running around the world with different you know the, the solutions they can be replicated as well so it's a very interesting opportunity to 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 to, to everybody or to the to the market itself. Indeed, so that, 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 that's uh, that's uh, my uh, my statement today, and I'm really open. I would like to hear your questions. Well, indeed, let let come to those questions. Well, thank you, Flavia, so much. For it. Now, uh, gentlemen, I, I'm going to first of all ask some contentious questions here because I'm going to take the 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 the, the way the hat of a non-believer. So I'm going to ask three questions, and the first one, I'm going to talk about it from a personal perspective, and then let's have a little look at what the market's saying. Um, so from a personal perspective, today it costs me 20 euros per month for all I can eat data that I run on my 4G phone. It's free, in practical terms. All of the, my, 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 uh, the father of three boys, all of them with smartphones, all of their services are free to air, Snapchat, WhatsApp, Facebook, but well, they don't use Facebook, it's only for the old people, Instagram. So all of the services they're using are free. All of the data practically are free. So I think it's a given that the consumer side of things in this great new world we're saying has got a chance. So let me, let me quote Standard Poor's Global Rating. So this is the industry top trends for 2019. In, in terms of just a, um, um, uh, for, for all the listeners tuning in, do please check out the S&P Global Ratings uh, Industry Trends for 2019. It's a fantastic uh, piece of research. And they've got some key takeaways. So I want to put this key takeaway to both Mustafa and to Flavio. We're going to spend about four or five minutes talking about this, and then I have two further questions. So their key observation for Telco for 2019 is as follows. As providers contend with mature industry conditions and aggressive competition, they are questioning whether 5G wireless technology investment will boost top-line growth and profitability or drain cash flow as they bid for new spectrum licenses and invest in network infrastructure. So given that they've built their business models and consumers, I think we concluded that the consumer route will be a minimal revenue. How can they turn these telcos into the business benefits? And who in your mind are good examples of telcos that are doing that? And I think I'll, I'll ask our first question to Mustafa, and then we'll go to Flavio. So as a person who's a bit cynical, as well, not cynical, but I'm, let me question it, uh, Mustafa. Consumers aren't there. The financial markets think we're at a pivotal point of, you know, how can telcos really articulate the business, business benefits? And is there a telco in your mind that's leading the way with that? Well, um, 
Uh, I would probably start with saying when, when, when you get uh, access to any bundle from any telecom provider today, you don't just get the data. Uh, the real value is all of the applications and, and all of the legacy from, from uh, internet solution providers that comes with it. And you've mentioned about your kids, for example, and using Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. So the value for the end consumer is not the data because the data is just the data, it's just binary that flows into your mobile or, or your laptop. But um, the real value is in the applications that use uh, these, these bundles. Uh, I think uh, you're absolutely right in terms of, of actually monetizing this on the expense of, of, of the end cu customer. Um, I don't think that's the right route. I think uh, there should be a lot of uh, investigation trying to understand what is the cost of this new technology and what is the added value and where uh, this cost can be covered and uh, the cost of maintaining these this nodes as well uh, can, can be covered. However, if, if you think about how mobile devices evolved a while ago um, from, from just plain telecommunication and texting to having applications on them. We have the iPhones and the Samsung today, and suddenly you have the whole world in, in the power of your hand. I think that's the, the real value for media telecom. It's all of these partnerships with other third parties that will be able to serve their digital content through, through their networks. Um, in terms of, of leading uh, customers, well, the first one that jumps into mind is Vodafone, mm -hmm. uh, because we're talking to them a lot about this, this the topic. The Vodafone business actually is fantastic, actually is fantastic to um, sell a clash or put up their um, stuff. Eh? Yes, absolutely. And, and, and the leadership there is, is, is keen and recognizes uh, the true value of, of, of media and telecom. And I would say it's probably one of the few um, leaders in the sector that can actually do it because mm -hmm. they have a global reach. And actually, being able to deploy the infrastructure shouldn't be quite a hassle for them because, well, they are doing it in, in multiple countries in a way. Uh, I think they do recognize the opportunity to create differentiation as well. We're doing other bits of work with them around other topics, uh, other technologies like blockchain, and AI, and IoT. Uh, and I think for them, uh, definitely 5G is, is an area that, that they want to, to be a key player in. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. And actually, I actually just want to touch on what Mustafa said there and encourage all listeners in to head to the Vodafone um, Business Benefits website and check out the Vodafone Labs for 5G. It's, it's compelling reading there. I, I'm going to change tax right now with a different question to Flavio. Okay, Flavio, so we buy it. It's going to happen. It's going to work. It's going to be great. All the telcos are going to become service providers and provide all these wonderful window of solutions. Okay, so look, what are the bottlenecks in implementing 5G? You know, why isn't it there already? It's been a kind of promise that's been lingering for a couple of years now. So where do you see the bottlenecks there and how are they being closed down and solved out? Flavio. Well, Mike, I mean, from, from the technical point, obviously, there, the 5G is under development, under sterilization yet. So, so a lot of technical challenges are being faced. Uh, at this moment. So, I mean, from the, 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 the vendors that are creating the solutions, so there, there's a, a lot of things going on. So, there is a development of platforms, management platforms, this is undergoing. And so, there, there's a lot of challenges, I mean, from, from the technical point, but also there's challenges from, from the business point as well. So, just putting a connection with your first question, um, uh, the point is to, 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 to I mean, to get the value from 5G, it's important to focus companies uh, where you can differentiate. So if you have solutions, uh, you're not, because to, to the customer, as you said, most of the solutions to customers, they're free, right? But to the, to the consumers, I mean, to the companies, uh, to the, when you talk to, to, to offering solutions to business customers, um, then you can differentiate. So the, there's also this business challenges or this bottleneck to understand this or to, to connect with these users. So, and also there's a risk as well, because uh, if you're if you're de deploying like a solution or a product, um, maybe you, you, you would like to offer this to, 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 to a lot of customers, not for one customer, right? But maybe uh, uh, you can, so there, there's a risk of creating the solutions and then putting it and, and so the, the, the company needs to buy it, your customer needs to, to buy and see the value. So uh, it's challenging because you need to work close to the user. Uh, you need like to tailor things to a group of users. So challenging to, 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 from this business point of view as well. 
but I think that the challenges uh, they are they are they are they are also an opportunity for the ones who, who can differentiate, right? Because uh, the operators they're they're trying to seek how to to add this value. If you like, if you go to AT and T, you know they spend eighty five billion dollars uh, to buy Tom Warner. Okay, so they're trying to put like focus on a vertical. I mean the the media and five G vertical. So for sure they will have different content to offer, and so they have like an end to end control of the of of, of the of the the information from production and also to 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 the to the I mean the delivery from production to delivery of the content. So they have it's a kind of differentiation. But if you are not if you don't have all this this money to spend, you need to 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 look different solutions. So obviously there is a cost for the technology, and this uh, the, the 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 great point is okay. Uh, should we with we get spectrum, we get new spectrum? Should we deploy a new network? How we can take advantage of that? So that's a kind of big question. The, the challenges to me are opportunity to the one who go first to the market and to the <laughs> can offer different solutions to your customers. I got it. So I, I want to I want to ask you a second question, and, and it would be remiss of us not having Flavio, your experience in industry and academia, and your experience, uh, Mustafa, and all of the calls here are all consumers. So we got over the hump of the commercials are going to work. We got over the hump of the technology is going to work. But let's talk about really what this can mean too, from a data privacy, from security, from ethics. You know, there are core challenges here with the Internet of Things, the amount of data being gathered about folk. And it chimes with a, a paper that my colleague Joseph was just about to publish on, on, on AI and ethics. So, so this is a large concern of public up in the UK about how, a, you know, uh, which is all in kind of commercial ethics of respect of IP, commercial respect of data privacy, of data protection, of security. Also, as consumers, and I'm going to go first to Mustafa, how concerned should we be about this? And in data ethics, AI, security, and privacy, how at the forefront are those concerns with the folk you're working with when they have these real commercial and technical concerns to worry about? Is there a trade-off here? Some some commentary, and that would be great. And same question then to Flavio, what's happening in Brazil? Well, I think as a technologist and a consumer myself, I I both see that I, I see the both sides of of, of, uh, of the issue here. Uh, I mean, we should be worried about about privacy and where our data ends, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think today with regulation catching up with what's happening, uh, it's getting easier and easier to implement solutions, whether in the space of IoT or edge computer or another technology. But on the other side, uh, as a technology, um, the seeing what's happening in the background is a little bit horrifying, you knowing how data is manipulated in the background, for example, or the replications to make sure that the system works. Um, I think for, for, for this particular use case for uh, 5G and edge computing, uh, I think the due diligence needs to be done by the industry itself. So understanding how the designs of solutions that run. The industry not an independent body. Well, uh, I'm quite sure that um, uh, by industry I mean businesses, but also the regulators and the controllers within mm -hmm. within the industry. Uh, I think the first step is to make sure that any designs for solutions that run on, on these new technologies need to align with standards and, mm -hmm. and, and regulations. Um, and the other one is is what other technologies can do in this space as well. And blockchain is a wonderful mm -hmm. example of how you can securitize um, identity and provide self-managed identity to the end consumer, but also go beyond that into enabling the consumer to manage their own subscriptions and where they want their data to go, not just the personal one, but the data generated by the devices and applications, et cetera, et cetera. And I think with the theme of decentralization and, and how we see edge computing, and, I, and I'm going to, to try to explain this uh, as less techy as possible. And if we could explain it in 60 seconds. <laughs> that would be great. If, if, you, <laughs> if, you, if, if we have a throwback uh, at the time where data warehousing was, was a big thing, and mm -hmm. everybody was hyped up uh, about where data can be stored, and you have a warehouse which has like a generic view of, of data and insight for an organization, and then you have marks which were segmented for location or, or for uh, specific points of interest, and then you have local data stored into your device. So if you 
um, forget about storage and, and data and you think about processing. This is what edge computing is enabling today. You still can process data that is relevant to the user on your device and you can process data that is driven to business on the cloud. But there is a layer that was missing, which is data for ecosystems. It's your location, it's your uh, online gamers around you, your community, where uh, Edge can help do a lot in that space. Thank you very much. I, and uh, I'm, I can't believe how quickly this time has gone. So I do want to get an answer from Flavio in this question. But Flavio, I would ask you to keep it concise in about a minute on this security, privacy, data, and protection around that from a Brazilian perspective and from academia, what's happening around standards. For one moment, and then I've got some stuff to wrap up on. Make sense, Flavio? Please, your comments on on that item there, please. Well, my for sure, data protection and regulation, and this is really a key key a key challenge as well. Uh, when we talked about the challenge, I thought on security, but I do not extend the answer on that. But as as in Europe, you have a new regulation for that. Also, we have that in Brazil. We have a new law that was approved in Brazil. And just to connect, you know the the uh, the, the, fa the, 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 the Facebook developer conference that is happening right now. Uh, so, so Mark Zuckerberg told that the future is private from his point of view. And so what we're ta talking here that uh, this is really a concerning point because uh, we are talking about the operator to, to run solutions that are helping uh, business. So uh, as I talked to the, to the agriculture side, uh, the, 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 the producers, uh, they are they are really you know uh, 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 aware of their data of the information that is key for their business. So this is really challenging. We have we will have for sure with the edge a lot of data being produced, a lot of different data. And I think that uh, the the regulation uh, uh, will be really important on this area because maybe talking about Facebook, the guys cannot use uh, the data in the in the in the, in the best way it should be used. So the regulation here is important because all this will give the, the to to everybody. I mean, to the market, uh, the the you know uh, the the, uh, the the reason to move inside the solutions. Or I mean, being being secure. The, the notion of being the data is secure. It's handled as should be done, and I have control of the data. To me, the future is the control of the data by the user. I mean, mm -hmm. and this can also become like things like data economy or things like that. But I, I, sell, I sell, I control my data. I sell what I want to sell or I, I make it private what I want to make. This is a kind of challenging, but also uh, it's a kind of step that we should move forward to, to take advantage of that technology as well. Fantastic. Thank you. Guys, we're almost nearing the close. Now, if we can be disciplined, we've got a closing comment. One thing for our audience take away in 45 seconds, Mustafa. One thing our audience, everything here today that should take away, the same 45 seconds, one thing the audience should take away from today. So, Mustafa, your 45 seconds, one thing the audience should take away from today's discussions is? I think probably collaboration to do anything with Edge. Uh, I think we have uh, media and telecom providing the right infrastructure and framework. I think what's missing in this equation is more businesses to be involved and uh, coming up with ideas together uh, about new solutions uh, that provide more value to, um, to the end co customer. I think it's having conversations uh, at industry levels mm -hmm. uh, to try to flesh out these use cases. Super, thank you. Flavio, same thing, 45 seconds. What's the one thing the audience should take away from today's discussion, please? Well, I think that to me we're talking about uh, integrated work, you know, about the operators, about uh, the different providers, providers there, there of, of of sensors, of sets of services that we run in the edge, of putting all of this together. Also talking to the industry as well, uh, not only the industry who built the technology for the operators, but also the customers that will run or they, they will look for the service. The point here is to work in an integrated way, uh, putting a connection with the different, uh, uh, I mean, point of views of the technology and trying to build this common view of the solution. That's the, 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 to me, the, the most important point here. Aberration and integration. Thank you. So, look, many thanks. What a great session, actually. Many thanks to Mustafa and Flavio for sharing with us their insights and indeed to Invenigib for bringing this event to market. To find out more about Invenica and their Discover the Possible program on emerging technology, 
please visit allthews.inventica.com. You can see it there on the screen. This session has been recorded and will be published on the website in the coming day or so, I think, is that right? There's also an accompanying white paper from Inventica on telecom and media innovation, which we will publish shortly. For more information or discuss any of the topics discussed today, please do get in touch with Inventica through the website. Our next Discover the Possible event is returning to blockchain, with a webinar to be held later in June. More information on that in due course. So until then, I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much for attending. I look forward to welcoming the next one. And thank you very much, Mustafa Antra Flavio, a truly international favor, Moroccan, Brazilian, and Irish today. So it's that not an interconnected world. I don't know what it is. Thank you very much. It's been a total pleasure. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you.